The year 2023 was the year I took YouTube seriously and became a lot more committed. One of the main things I decided on YouTube was because of the number of questions I have received about my experiences with each new filmmaking gear I've acquired and filmmaking in general. With suggestions and motivation, I decided why not face my fears head on, talking in front of the camera, address the common questions really get asked. I must say it's been a rewarding experience so far. My goal was 10,000 subscribers, although I am very happy with the 6,000 plus of you who have subbed to this channel and the few brands that reached out to me in 2023, I am grateful. I received and reviewed a lot of audio gear, LED lights, amongst others in 2023. Going straight to number one is the Holy Land Lark Max, even though the Rode Wireless Pro competes with it for audio. The Lark Mark is my go-to wireless portable microphone for the clear studio-like crisp audio it captures. I must say, the only reason I also have the Rode Wireless Pro is 32-bit and time code. That's why today I'll be using the Holy Land Lark Marks throughout this video. The Godox VL150 is number two on my list of best audio gear for 2023. I have stuck with this light as my main key light for all my YouTube videos due to its color rendition index or CRI. Even though I have some other lights from the ZSYB like the ZSYB Y500S, my brightest light and many other lights in my arsenal, I have always gone back to the Godox VL150. It locks on one side which makes it easy when setting up and feels solid and well made. Number three is my Zipon Micro 2 slider. I use this slider a lot. It's an automated slider that can either be powered by Sony MPF batteries or via USB-C using maybe a power bank on one side of the slider. It can be controlled using this mobile app that's available on both Android and iOS. And where those elements are variable, you are able to control it with few buttons on one side of the slider. It's portable and looks very well made. There are attachments available to purchase as extra add-ons they enable you to get some more complex shots. Example, you can rotate with tracking and also tilt all at the same time, depending on your setup or needs. I'll be doing an in-depth review video on this, so don't forget to like and subscribe. Number four is lenses. The Sigma 18-35 f1.8 EF mount was my go-to lens in 2023, as it's a very fast lens at f1.8 maybe because I use it for all my YouTube videos, but also because I'm able to adapt it to my Micro Four Thirds cameras, the Blackmagic 4K or the Panasonic GH5. My Sony A7 IV, which I'm using right now, using the Sigma MC11 adapter, and also the BMPCC 6K Pro. I use it a lot for my top-down shots, and it's been rock solid. This lens has endured a lot. As you can see, it fell and lost part of its front thread, Tried to glue it in, but that didn't work. So I've just been using it that way ever since, and it's still able to take on my threaded filters. The DJI RST is my number five. Even though I'm not a big fan of gimbals, as I prefer steady shots, the DJI RS3 feels and looks very well made. In fact, I just got this gimbal a few days ago after upgrading for the Zion Crane 2S, a gimbal I've used for more than two years. For a good while, I didn't see the need to upgrade to the Crane 2S, as was still sufficient for me. It had begun to feel heavy because one of the motors would block the screen if I didn't have the screen opened up. It just began to feel a lot more awkward and large in my hands. It did serve its purpose for the period I used it, but after getting the RS3 and testing it out, I have not regretted it. It's lighter compared to the Crane 2S on Zion and easy to carry about. I'm impressed with its auto lock system and easy setup. More on this gimbal in the review video coming soon as well. Number six is a small rig camera tool or folding tool set. This small rig tool set features a set of screwdrivers and wrenches designed for filmmakers and photographers. It is compact and easy to carry anywhere. It is also made of solid stainless steel. There are additional threaded holes on the side for storing spare screws and has always come in handy on every set I've been on. Number seven, cameras. This is like the most difficult one to rank as my best camera of 2023. Allow me to break number 7 into two subcategories as my arsenal consists of the Panasonic GH5, Blackmagic 4K, Blackmagic 6K Pro and Sony A7 IV. Category A would be image quality while category B would be 
easy to quick run and gun. For A is definitely the Black Magic 6K Pro. This for me is about Black Magic Raw. The Black Magic 6K Pro produces amazing images for its price. At some cost though. For me, the cost is what you need to rig it up with no image stabilization or follow focus, which are things to consider when buying this camera. It is hands down the best camera in my opinion. Another issue is that this camera chews up a lot on memory. I'm not having a lot of headache in terms of storage and be researching the NAS solution. Guys, I would appreciate if you could point me in the direction of a good NAS solution for small businesses. Now, category B is the Sony A74. Sony, Sony, Sony. I already have a video on why I got this camera. I will leave a link in the video description below. My only issue with this camera is overheating and crop when shooting 4K60. Listen, it doesn't really affect the image quality, although there is a slight dip in how much light is hitting the sensor, even though this is not a, much of a problem for me. I'm also considering getting a lower 9mm with zero distortion for my wide angle shots to compensate on the crop. Its autofocus is out of this world, something the Blackmagic cameras do not have. Now, number 8 is the Portkey's LH5P super bright portable monitor. The LH5P is a 5.5-1700 nit brightness 4K HDMI touchscreen monitor with wireless camera control for the Sony A7 Mark III, Sony A7 Mark IV, BMPCC 4K, 6K, 6K Pro, DSLR, Cinema and mirrorless cameras. Although there is a newer version called the LH5P Mark II which goes as bright as 2000 nit. I have no need to upgrade and continue to enjoy using it. In fact, this is the monitor I use all the time. You can see just here above the screen. To see myself when recording my YouTube videos, it comes with a hard plastic case to keep it safe from damaging when traveling with it. I've had this for more than two years now and it is never ever disappointed. The last thing on my list is the Blackmagic Mini Panel. As I edit and color grade using DaVinci Resolve, the mini panel has made my color grading process so fast even though it costs an arm and a leg. And I think this has been a worth the investment as I'm still learning the craft in color grading. So that's it for my top nine gear in the year 2023. I used many different pieces of gear, but these were the ones that stood out for me in 2023 in terms of hardware. I didn't feature any computers as I haven't upgraded from my M1 Max MacBook Pro. I have not seen the need to. So guys, I'm looking forward to a great 2024 with many more and I wish you the same. Let me know what your top filmmaking gear of 2023 are in the comment section below. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.